Hey what's up everyone, Julian here, hope you're all good and welcome back to another video on Flask and today we're going to be carrying on with task queues but we're going to be building something quite cool. So we're going to create a function that's going to take an image and it's going to create five different copies of that image and save them all at different sizes, um, also with a different file name and maintaining that aspect ratio. So we're going to create a thumbnail, we're going to create a small one, a medium, large, XL, etc. We're then going to use the HTML picture tag to render a different image in the browser depending on the size of the viewport. So nowadays, of course, we've got so many different devices. We've got mobile, we've got tablet, we've got tablet flipped on its side, we've got desktop, and that can be you know anywhere from I don't know 17 inches up to 50 if you're viewing it on a big TV. And the HTML picture tag allows us to provide different sources which will only be rendered depending on the size of the viewport. And what that's going to do is it's going to save us bandwidth because we're able to render a much smaller image that's going to be more suitable for the viewport. You know, you won't want to render a 2560 by 1440 image if it's going to be shown on a mobile display that's, you know, a couple of hundred pixels wide. That's crazy. So we get an immediate performance boost here with rendering images. And we're going to run all of this function in a task queue in the background. So we're going to offload it to a completely separate process. So let's jump into an example. I can show you what we're working with here. So it's just a, we got a couple of HTML files. This is the first one, just a very simple uh, file browser. We can upload an image, go ahead and upload that. And you can see in the terminal, I've got our task queue up and running. And again, we are using RQ for our task queue and we've got Redis also running in the terminal. So Redis is our message broker and we've got RQ here doing the background tasks. So that's done and it's completed in 0.83 seconds. And if we go and go to this link, we can see we've got an image. But let's open the developer tools because this is where things get interesting. So in the network tab, I've got image selected here in the filters. And what I'm gonna do, I'm, I've also got this set as responsive. So I bring that all the way down and refresh. So you can see here, the viewport is at 62 pixels wide. But if we start to increase that, keep an eye on the network. You can see there we get example 540.png. And if we keep going, we get 768.png, 1080.png, 1200.png and finally we get example.png which is the original file that we uploaded and we can just keep resizing this and you can see the different images will be rendered depending on the size of the viewport and just again we're going to start start over um, but just keep an eye on the size uh, tab here you can see we get 52 kilobytes 81 124 143, 249 is the original. So this is why it's gonna save us bandwidth and it's gonna increase our performance because we're loading an image that's much smaller and the browser hasn't got to do that much work to actually scale the image down to the viewport. So this is what we're gonna be doing. So let's go ahead and jump over into the code. So we're picking up where we left off on the last episode. So if we take a look here in our directory structure, don't worry about too much of this, it's just some things that I'm, uh, I've am i been playing around with. But it's the same as last time, we've got run.py, which is the entry point for our app. We've got our init.py, which we haven't done anything else with, we're just doing some imports, um, creating our Redis connection, creating our queue. And we are using the RQ library for our task queue. And then we've got these two files here, we've got views and tasks. If we take a look at views, we do have a new view here. And I think what I'm going to do is just, um, well, in fact, we've got a couple of views here. Um, one of them takes the image, saves it, creates a new directory, and the other route is what we're using to display the image. And then if we jump into tasks, we can see we've got a new task function here that we've created, this create image set. It takes the image directory and the image name. We specify a few different sizes that we want. So we've got a thumbnail, we've got small, medium, large, and XL. And you can see here, we've got the corresponding pixel values. Um, we're then using the um, dot thumbnail method from Pillow, which is gonna let us resize an image and maintain the aspect ratio. So these, uh, 
these numbers here are just for the width. So it's gonna maintain the aspect ratio, but it's just gonna reduce the image size to whatever width we specify. And then all we're doing is saving this new file and giving it this different name of dash thumbnail or dash 540 or dash 768, etc., up to 1200. And this is gonna be running as a task in the background. So really nice if you've got some kind of um, content management system and you wanna generate loads of different sized images. You can use a uh, task queue like this with a function that's gonna just offload that to a separate process and go to work in the background. So this is what we're gonna be building today. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and delete everything that we've got here. I'll leave that comment and go ahead and save. And in our tasks, I'll go ahead and delete everything we've got here. Okay, so let's try and power through this. We'll quickly take a look at the HTML as well. We've got just a simple HTML page. It's got a uh, container up the top here with just a little message area for getting flashed messages. So I do have an episode on working with uh, message flashing flasks. So I'll go ahead and find that. And then we've just got a, uh, a form here with the uh, action as slash upload image, which is the route we're gonna create. We're posting that data. We've got the ENC type as multi-part form data. And it's just a single file input. So that's what creates that browser, that file browser and allows the user to select an image. And then down here, we've just got a little um, bit of ginger. If there's a message, then go ahead and create this anchor, which is gonna take the user to view that image. So not really, um, you know, what we're building here, it's not really practical for a uh, kind of user interface, but it's just to show you what we can do. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is come back to the terminal where we're running Flask, and you're gonna to need to pip install a few things. So if I do pip list, uh, we've got beautiful soup. We're not gonna be using that in this one. We used that in the last episode. We've got Flask, we've got um, LXML. Again, we're not gonna be using that in this episode. Uh, we've got Pillow, so you can get that with a pip install capital P I L O W P I W L O W. So pip install pillow. Um, we've got Redis and we've got RQ as well. And you can just pip install those with their names. So pip install Redis and RQ. So that should be everything that you need to run this example. So let's go ahead and just flask run. So in our views, let's go ahead and create our first view. So in fact, what I think we'll do is create the task first because we're going to import it into our view. So go ahead and make sure you pip and saw pillow because we're going to go ahead and import it. So let's go ahead and from PIL import image. And the image class is what allows us to actually work with images using the pillow library. Uh, we're going to import OS and we're going to import time. We're going to use time to time how long this function actually takes. So let's go ahead and create our function. So def create image set and it's going to take an image duh. So that's going to be the directory where the image is and the image name. So first thing I want to do is create our timer. So we'll do start equals time dot time. We need to then create a few different sizes. So we want a thumbnail, which is going to be 30 by 30. I want a Well, I said that wrong. It's not going to be 1200 by 1200. It's going to be 1200 wide and maintain whatever height um, it's gonna maintain the aspect ratio of the original image. So then we need to actually go ahead and open our image. So we'll create a new variable called image and we'll go ahead and call image, capital I. So this is the pill, func the pill class that we imported. Image.open and we're gonna do os.path.join because what we want to do is 
join up our image directory and our image name. So we do that with image duh, comma image underscore name. So that's going to open the image and store it in the image variable. So the next thing we'll do is create our thumbnail. So what I want to do is make a copy of the image and then do the resizing and then save it with a different file name. So uh, thumbnail image equals image dot copy. And then we'll go ahead and thumbnail image uh, and we'll call the thumbnail method. And that's um, a method that we can call on a pill image object. And that's going to take the size. So we're going to pass it thumb and we'll also pass it image dot L A N C Z O S. And this is just, I think a kind of compression type or something that the uh, pill is going to apply to the image. Um, I think some people use anti alias and there's all sorts of different kind of, um, algorithms that you can apply on this image object when you call the thumbnail method. But we're going to use this one. Um, I've done a bit of testing and this one seems to look absolutely fine. So finally, what we're going to do is call thumbnail image dot save. And then we're going to pass it the um, path of where we want to save it and a few other options as well. We're going to do a bit of compression on the image. So we'll go ahead and create an F string. And in our first placeholder, we're going to do os.path.join. And then we want to give it the image directory and we're going to give it the image name. Um, in fact, I have missed something out. So I want to split the image name into the name and the extension. So we'll go ahead and we can do that here. So image extension is going to be image name dot split and we want to split it on the dot and we'll take the last element so we'll use a slice there and just take the minus one element then what we'll, I want is the image underscore name and that will be um, again image name dot split and this time we'll take the first element so we will call slice and pass in zero so this is going to mean that we need our users to upload a uh, an image with a file name without a dot in it. So, you know, the, we could probably build in some kind of validation into this, but it's just going to take forever. So we're not going to bother. So back to our thumbnail image dot save. So we're calling os.path.join. We're giving it the image directory and the image name. And then I want to add thumbnail because the way that the um, picture element works in HTML is that we give it a set of different image names that we give it um, some options to load. And if we take a quick look, we'll come back to this, but you can see here we use the picture element and then we use these source tags and we're giving it different names depending on the uh, max width of the viewport. So in this case, you know, we've got image dash thumbnail, we've got image dash 540, etc. So we're going to change each of the different image names that we're going to save to have a dash and then either thumbnail or the size of the image that we want to load. So let's head back here. So we've got thumbnail and then we want to throw in a dot and then another placeholder and then our image extension. And we're going to pass a few more things to uh, dot save. So we're going to pass in optimize, and that will be equal to true. And we'll also pass in quality, and I'm going to set that as 95. Okay, I think that's all good. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and we want to create a few different images. So we'll go ahead and Place that in, so we've got small, medium, large, and XL. So let's go ahead and small, medium, large, and XL. And then we need to go ahead and change a few different things. So here we're gonna have small image. So we need to copy these, we've got the image. 
Happy Blood. Anyway. Okay, and we need to change the values that we're passing into the thumbnail method. So here we'll pass in small, we'll pass in, we'll pass in large, and of course, and then the final thing we need to change is the um, the name of the file here. So thumbnail, then we've got 540, we've got 768, we've got 1080 and 1200. Okay, so I think that's everything for creating our set of new images. Finally, what I'm going to do is just call uh, create an ending. So we'll do time dot time. We'll create a new variable called time elapsed. And that's going to be end minus start. Oh. I don't know why VS Code seems to think I want stop iteration when I'm typing in start, but whatever. And then we'll just go ahead and print out um, task complete in, and then colon, need to make this an F string. And we'll go in and throw in time elapsed, and then we'll just return true. So I think that's everything we need for our uh, create image set function and again this is going to be running in a task queue in the background so I think that's everything we need for now let's jump into our views so what we're going to do is create a route that's going to let the user something uh, upload the image we're going to save the image and then call our uh, background function here so we're going to call create image set pass it the directory and pass it the image name Let's just take a quick look at the directory structure here. So in our static directory, I've got an IMG directory. In that, I've got an uploads directory. And what our root is gonna do is create a new directory here with a kind of random, um, a random name. And that's where we're gonna upload our image sets to. So if you were working with a database, then you probably want to do this by having the, gen the database generate you a unique ID for that image and then using that ID as the directory name. So maybe you'd have like an image class or an image, uh, an image model. And for each of, for each of the models, you would have a uh, kind of a 540, a 768, a 1080, somewhere in your database. So you've got the name of that file and the location of where it's stored. So let's go ahead and create our roots. So first thing we're gonna do is from app.tasks import create image set. So we need to import our function that we just created here because we're gonna call it with the uh, q.in queue and then pass it the create image set. We need to do a few imports from Flask. So from Flask import, uh, what have we got? Render template, we've got request we've got redirect and we've got url4 and flash in fact i don't think we're going to need um redirect and url4 i don't think don't hold me to that i don't think we're going to use it and then two more things we're going to import os and we're going to import secrets and we're going to use os to uh, join up our directories and create directories and we're going to use the secrets module to create that directory name so that's what we're going to use to kind of simulate a database creating us a unique id so let's go ahead and get started so we need to add a few things to our app.config we need a secret key and i'm just going to set this as just some random string for now i'm going to need a path to the upload directory so app.config upload underscore directory equals. So let's jump into the terminal here. And what I'm gonna do is CD into app and then static and then IMG and uploads because that's where I want our images to get uploaded to. And if we run LS, we can see we've got two of these directories in there that our app has created. So if we enter pwd then we get a full path to the directory that we're using so go ahead and 
drop that in. Let's, uh, let's head back out of this directory and ls one more and then we can do flask run so we're calling flask run in the directory with run.py because that's the entry point to our file right i think that's everything we need for the app config so now we can create the root app.root and let's spell it right we'll call it upload image and we're going to be rendering a template and posting a form to this root. So we need methods equals get and post. Let's go ahead and create the function. So upload image. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set this message variable as none. Uh, the message variable is what we're going to use to just render out a link to the template where the user can click to go and look at those images. So if request.method is equal to post, in fact, let's not get too ahead of ourselves and let's go ahead and just return render template and what did I call it? Upload image. And we're gonna pass in a, um, we're just gonna pass in message for now. What I'll do is just comment that out and let's head to that route and make sure everything's, okay, good. Everything's showing, we haven't got any errors here. If you guys want to see the HTML for this, I'll throw a link in the description to my website where you can get a copy of um, everything that we're doing in this episode. So, if the request method equals post, we want to grab hold of the image. So we'll do image equals request.files and then we'll um, get the image by using the image key. And if we look at the form, we can see we've got the name attribute from the input there set to image. So we want to create a random directory name and like i said if you're using a database then you want to use your database to generate you a unique id for these images so what we're going to do is create a new variable called image name and we're going to use secrets dot um, token hex and we're going to pass it the number of characters that we want so we'll just do 16. Next thing we need to do is create the directory. So we'll do so with os.mkdir. And then we're gonna go and pass it os.path.join. So we wanna give it our um, upload directory. And then we also want to separate that with a comma and then pass in our image directory name. So again, before you run this, you need to make sure that this upload directory actually exists on your system. Um, and what this is going to do is just going to basically tack onto the end here, slash, and then the random um, hex string that secrets.token hex is going to create. And that's what we're going to use for the directory where we're going to upload our image sets to. So next thing we need to do is go ahead and save the image image.save and again we're going to use os.path.join and we're going to pass that our upload directory we're going to pass it the um, image directory name that other variable that we just created and we're also going to pass it the image.file name and dot file name is an attribute that you can access on um, any images that you upload with Flask, so we can get image.filename. So that's going to go ahead and save the image to our upload directory in this newly created directory name with the image file name. So the next thing we need to do um, is go ahead and get a reference to the actual directory that it's in. So I want the full path because that's what we're going to pass to our function. So let's just call this image the and os.path.join and to that we are going to pass our uploads directory along with the image directory name. 
just like so. And now we can actually add this task to our queue. So we do that with Q dot in queue. And if we take a look at our task, it's called create image set and it's going to take the image directory and the image name. So let's go ahead and grab our function name. We're going to pass that in. It takes the uh, image directory, so image dir, and it also takes the file name. So we'll call image dot file name. Okay, so that is going to add the task to our queue and is going to go ahead and run our task function here. And then I think what we'll do is just go ahead and flash um, image uploaded and send. Oh, sorry, lost you guys. <laughs> Slip of the finger on the keyboard. So image uploaded and sent for resizing and we'll throw in the success class as well so this will give us a nice green flash and now let's just go ahead and create the message that we want to drop into our template so message equals i'm going to use an f string so all i want to do in this message is create a um a link where we can go and take a look at our image so that's going to be slash image slash and then we'll throw in a placeholder so image der name and this probably doesn't make much sense because we're going to create another root under it uh, image der name slash and then another placeholder image dot file name and then we need to call dot split because i just want the file name itself without the extension um, and it's going to be the first element of the file name okay so i think we are looking good so I think what we can do is just quickly test this before we create the second root. So let's go ahead and oh, we got a lit, okay, I know what I've done. I used single quotes inside a double quoted string. Okay, so let's keep an eye on our task queue here. So again, if you haven't been watching um, the last couple of episodes on working with task queues, if I go ahead and clear and run ls, I'm in the I'm in a new terminal, but in the same directory as our application entry point, so run.py. So to actually start the RQ worker listening for any tasks that are being added to the queue, we just do RQ worker. And you should get a message here just saying that it's listening on default, so that's all good. So let's go ahead and let's see if this works. I've got an image here and this is 2560 by 1440. Go ahead and upload. Okay. Mm, all right, let's see what I've done. God, why don't you guys tell me? Another slip of the finger. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's just uh, refresh the page. Grab that and upload. Okay. And you can see the background task ran and it was completed in 0.84 seconds. And we've got our view image link here. And if I, you guys probably can't see this, but we've got slash image slash um, and then that random um, ID that we used for the directory name slash example. So that's all looking good. So we just need to do one more thing and that's create the root what we're going to use to view our images. So app.root slash, uh, what did I call it, image. And then we're gonna throw in a few variables in the URL. So we've got a directory name and we've got the image name. Def, uh, we'll just call it view image. And because we've got variables coming in the URL, we need to pass them into our function. Probably not a good idea to use dir as a variable name, but whatever. So let's go ahead and return render template. And we're gonna return this view image template. And we'll take a look at view image shortly. And we're also going to pass in the dir variable. And we're gonna pass in the img variable. So a very, very simple route. So we're just gonna to go to slash image pass it the um, directory name that we've created. So if we take a look in static and image uploads, 
we can see now we've got a few of these directories which we've used to um, kind of be the parent directory for this image set. So we've got the original, we've got the thumbnail, we've got 1200, 1080, 768 and 540. So let's go ahead and what I might do actually is just go ahead and uh, delete these for now. Let's go ahead and delete. Okay, so back to our HTML here. So let's go ahead and upload another image. And there we go, we get image uploaded and sent for resizing. We see our task queue running in the background and now we can click on the image. Let's go check it out. Okay, and if we go to um, the developer tools down here, come to network and click on the image tab. And I've got this in responsive here in Chrome. And if we minimize this all the way down and I'm just gonna reload. So you can see here, we've got the first image that's loaded is the example thumbnail. And as we grow, we get to 540. And then we get to 768, we get to 1080 and we should get 1200 and there we go. And then we get our full size image at the end. So you can imagine that this is really, really useful for um, improving performance on your website because you're not, you know, the browser isn't having to do loads of extra processing to scale that image down. You're providing an image that's much closer to the actual size of the viewport. And you can see here as we resize, it's just, um, loading a different image. So let's go and take a look at the HTML for this. So what I'm gonna do, we don't need to keep an eye on the, oh, wrong thing. We don't need to keep an eye on the terminal, so I'll make this a bit bigger. So don't worry too much about this. This is just some bootstrap stuff, um, but this is just standard um, HTML that we're working with. So we've got the picture tag, and maybe what I can do is show you a quick example on the, uh, Mozilla website. So this is where I got the source from. So it's just a picture tag and inside the picture tag, you provide this source tag. And don't worry about the class, that again is just another bootstrap class. Um, but the important things to pay attention to are the source tags. So each source tag has a source set attribute and that takes a path to the image that you want to render. Um, and then I guess the probably more important part to pay attention to is the media attribute here. So this is where we can provide a max width or a min width value followed by how many pixels. So in this case, we've got, um, if the viewport has a max width of 150 pixels, we want to render the dash thumbnail uh, PNG image. However, if it grows to um, have a max width of 540, then we're gonna load the 540. And again, this pattern just follows all the way up to a max width of 1200. And if it gets above that, when, then we're just gonna default back to the, um, using the image tag. And to that, I'm just providing the path to the default image. So that's how we're working with the picture element here in HTML to dynamically load these different images. So I think that covers everything for this episode. Um, do I have anything else I want to talk about? I don't think so. Um, I think I'm going to end it now before I start waffling on like a lunatic. So um, I mean, maybe we can just recap what we've done. So let's have a look again at our background task function. So importing pill, OS and time. We've created our function, which takes an image directory and an image name. We've set some default sizes, which we want to scale our image to. We're using image.open to open the image, and that takes a directory name and an image name, and we're just using os.path.join to join them together. And then we're going ahead and just creating a copy of the original image and then creating more copies at different um, aspect ratios and then again in the views we've just got a um, we have to import the function that we're going to call a few imports from flask os and secrets 
and then we go ahead and take that image from the user when it's submitted with the form. We'll create the new directory that we're going to save the image to. Go ahead and save it. Call our q.inq, uh, q which is going to go and uh, add a new task to the queue. And then it's going to go ahead and execute that in the background. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I know I started to waffle off at the end of it. It seems to be a pattern, something I keep doing in these videos, so I will try and get better. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments, then leave them down below. Um, I will have a text-based version of this, so you can see the code again. I will throw that uh, link in the description too. So thank you very much for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And thank you very much for watching again. <laughs> And I will see you in the next one.